the small. Yeah, you can touch his tail. And so then the two that we have on exhibit are almost five years old. Yeah, so they were actually in our education department up until last year. Yep, so we actually have a cycle that we go through with St. Augustine's Alligator Sanctuary down in Florida. So they will be born there, and then if we are in need of some alligators for our okay. education program or even for our exhibit animals, they will actually send us up some alligators. And then once they get too big for our education program, they'll go on exhibit. And then once they're too big for all the facilities that we have for them here, they get to go back down the Florida and retire. It's kind of a big cycle. There we go. Oh, I got your hand locked. He's stuck in those. Yep. So you guys have a guess as to how many teeth alligators have? Thirty. Sixty. Closer. So they have about eighty teeth in their mouth at all times. So. He, Buford here has probably all, most of his baby teeth still since he is only two. But so once he loses those baby teeth, he'll get his adult teeth. But then once he loses those adult teeth, if he does, he actually has more adult teeth that come after that. So kind of similar to sharks, they'll actually have a pretty unlimited amount of teeth because that's one of the main ways that they rip apart their prey. So do you guys know what would hunt alligators? you have any idea? Little guys. Uh, maybe herons? Maybe, yeah. So at this size, they have a ton of predators, but once they're full grown, they actually are called apex predators, which means that they're at the top of their food chain. <laughs> so the only predator that they have when they're full grown is actually humans. So, But at this size, their main predator is actually larger alligators. So during nesting time and when those babies are hatching, there's a ton of alligators in the same area at one time. So food can sometimes get scarce depending on where they are. And if that does happen, these little guys are the first ones to go when those larger alligators start to get hungry. And that's another reason why the mothers will actually carry them in their mouth. So it's kind of a decoy that another alligator thinks that she's eating it, but she's just transporting them from the nest to the water and vice versa. Pretty cool, right? Do you guys get to touch his tail? How does it feel? It feels like spikes. Like spikes? Is it pretty smooth still? Yeah, it's kind of smooth. Yeah, so their scales, all reptile scales, are actually made out of the same material as our fingernails called keratin. So if you feel your fingernails, it should feel pretty similar to the here. Pretty cool, right? No, we do have hand sanitizer up there for you guys if you want any after you touch his tail, too. I don't want to touch it. You guys have any questions about Buford? What would these guys be eating in captivity at this size? So this size, um, we feed them gator nuggets. Um, it's kind of like a dog food that's specialized for gators. So um, it has all the same nutrients and stuff that they would be getting from meat. But right now, we are actually starting to wean them off of those gator nuggets and they're starting to eat very small mice that we call them. It's kind of like as an ID for them since we have a bunch of different sizes. So these guys have been doing pretty good with eating their pinkies. So eventually, um, once they get a little bit bigger, they'll be eating mice, um, pieces of chicken, beef, all that kind of stuff. Yep, so they are carnivores, so they have a strictly carnivorous diet here as well. Do you get to touch his tail? You don't want to? No. <laughs> now, so his scales are pretty cool. They do have a ton of adaptations for him. So he, at this size, is super camouflaged when it comes to living out in the Everglades and the swamp area. So eventually, he won't have these yellow stripes on him. But for now. Yep, so they will be this darkish black brown color eventually completely when they're older. But so at this size, when they're floating around in the water, swimming around, having a good day, they, if a larger bird of prey or something that could potentially eat them at this size is looking above them, and they look down and see this pattern, it actually mimics and looks just like the ripples of the sunlight on the top of the water. So these yellow little stripes help him camouflage into the water. And then also into the marshy swamp area that you would see. 
So all those really tall water plants. Um, this would also help him camouflage his belly to those. Then his belly scales also help him camouflage. So his belly is getting a little darker since he's getting a little bit older. But if there's a larger alligator underneath him, it would look up and it would look just look exactly. Like the water. Yep. So they would look up and his belly scales would look almost identical to the sun coming through the water. Yeah. And then his tail is super important to him, so you guys can touch his tail if you want. You didn't get to touch it already. Did you get to touch his tail? Yeah. <laughs> but so that tail is all muscle. And so right now if he would, yep, so they do use it to swim. It's kind of like a little motor for them. But because it is all muscle, if he did swipe his tail, right now it would pretty much just be a slap on the wrist. But a full-grown alligator can actually, with one swipe of his tail, break an adult human's thigh bone in half. So it's almost the equivalent to dropping an entire dump truck on your legs. So super powerful. And that also helps them death roll. Have you guys ever heard of an alligator yes. death roll? Yep. So if they go for a larger prey item that they can't necessarily swallow whole, they'll actually use their tail to spin them around in super small circles. Tear to shreds. Yep. And so they'll tear that prey to shreds. Exactly. You know your alligator facts. Is there anything that I'm missing? No? <laughs> How are you? Did you get to touch his tail? Yeah. How did it feel? Good?